Welcome back to my series on chess opening theory. In this video, I'm going to be looking at a very dynamic and imbalanced and unexplored line in the bishop e2 sub variation of the advanced variation of the French defense. So the French defense is when we have e4, e6, d4, d5. And the advanced variation is when white now plays pawn to e5. Black will then generally strike at the center with pawn to c5, trying to get rid of the pawn on d4 so that black can attack the pawn on e5. White will generally play pawn to c3, getting ready to take back on d4 with a pawn to keep the pawn on e5 strong. Black will then usually play knight to c6, developing a piece and putting some pressure on these two squares. White will then usually play knight to f3, also developing a piece and defending these two squares. Black will then usually play queen to b6, developing their queen and putting some pressure on the d4 pawn as well as the b2 pawn. And then the three main moves for white are pawn to a3, bishop to e2, and bishop to d3. And so this game, white played bishop to e2. And here in this position, it's very important that black now take on d4 right away. If black instead goes for knight h6 right now, then white can go for bishop takes h6. And if black tries the queen b takes b2 trick, then it doesn't really work because after bishop e3, queen takes a, a1, queen c2, black's queen will eventually be trapped because of the pawn on c3 doing a good job you know, stopping black's knight or bishop from coming in, from helping the queen escape. But um, instead, that's not what happened in the game. Instead, black should just take on d4. Or white takes back with the pawn to keep this guy strong. And now black plays knight h6. Remember that uh, the reason why I personally don't like knight g7 is because it allows the knight a3, knight c2 maneuver, which is just a very good square for white's knight. So after knight h 6 White plays, bishop takes h6, and black goes for queen takes b2, leading to a very exciting, very dynamic, very imbalanced position where the top players have not yet figured out the best way to play it. it. So, in this game, with the white pieces, we have Grandmaster Kaido Kulauts. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. He is a Grandmaster from Estonia, and he has been the national champion for Estonia multiple times, as well as representing Estonia many times in the Chess Olympiad. And with the black pieces, we have Grandmaster Arjun Aragaisi, who is the current national champion for India, and is at the time of this video about 19 years old. So we're all very excited to see what the future might have in store for Grandmaster Eric Icy. And this game was played this year at the French Team Championship uh, Top 16 section. And I wasn't able to find that much uh, information about this tournament in English, but more information about um, the players as well as what information I was able to find about the event can be found in the video description. And now back to the game. So before continuing, it's important to just note that um, the reason why black should not take back right away is white can then just play queen d2, developing their queen, defending this pawn, getting ready to castle, and play against you know these two very weak pawns that black would now have. Like black really does not want to have these weak pawns. So, as a result, if black is going to take such damage to their pawn structure, black should grab some compensation. In this case, the compensation would be some material in the form of form of a pawn. Anyway, black is now attacking white's rook. So, there are a number of moves that white has tried in, pa in practice in the game. White played the move knight bd2, which is one of the best moves. Oops, it's also worth um, just taking a quick look at knight to c3, which would also defend the rook. I personally don't think knight c3 is that great, because black can then just take the knight instead of taking the bishop. 
and white can save their bishop, but after queen to a3, I think black is just doing very well here. I think black has a bit of an edge because black would be up a pawn and not have taken any damage to their pawn structure, and their king is not in any immediate danger. I think black can just calmly develop, get their king to safety, and just be very fine here. Here, but that's not what happened in the game. So, uh, let's see. Back in this position, what happened in the game was the move knight bd2. But another move that I think is just a little bit better because it gives black a chance to go wrong would be to just castle. Like, if I had white in the position, I would just castle kingside because it kind of sets a nasty little trap. After a queen takes a1, black can go queen to b3. Sorry, white can go queen to b3. And if black now takes the bishop, then white can play knight to c3. And after this, this like, when it comes to queen versus two rooks, looks like the answer of which is better is often it depends on the position. But in general, the queen is usually better than the two rooks when you have a middle game. In which this certainly is, because the queen will often have some very nice tactics on the opponent's king, in like some nasty forks and things like that. And not only that, but in this particular position, white's pieces are mostly out, and white's king, you know, has gotten to safety, whereas, you know, black's pieces are looking very silly. So that is another reason why you know, white would be better in this position, and why I personally would be quite happy to take this position with white. But if instead of taking the bishop, if instead black tries to free their queen with the move, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, white would be able to launch a bit of an attack with the move, bishop to b5 check. And here, the best move for black would be the move king to d8, if black instead plays bishop d7, then white would just be able to take. And if black takes, then whoops, black is going to be losing back the rook. Not only that, but losing it back with check, giving white time to get their bishop to safety, and white would just be up a knight. And king to uh, king to d8 is clearly the best move, but. Um, as an exercise, if you want, you can pa now pause the video and try to find what the best move for white would be in this position if black were to play king to e7. It's a very cool little idea. I will reveal the move in 3, 2, 1. So if black, for whatever reason, played the move king to e7, then white would have this very cool little trick with bishop takes g7, attacking the rook and this bishop, and also winning a pawn, and maybe landing the bishop on f6 check, where it would just be doing some very nasty things. I think it would, in fact, even be checkmate. Yeah, it would be. So, after black takes, I think taking is just forced. I would have the move queen a3 check. Black's king can only run to one square, which is d8. Then we would have queen to d6 check. Black has only one legal move. And this would be checkmate. So that is why king to e7 is not a good move. So the best move is obviously king to d8. And then in this position, white can continue the attack with bishop to g5 check. And white is down in exchange in two pawns. But honestly, I think this position would be just a lot of fun for white. Like, I would be very happy to take this position with white, even if... Um, even if my opponent was Magnus Carlsen, although uh, it, I would still lose, but at least I would have fun losing. Thing. Anyway, this um, is not uh, what happened in the game. Instead, what happened in the game is white played the move knight bd2, but if white instead went for castle's kingside, the best move for black would be to just take the bishop. And then white could go knight bd2, and this position did, in fact, happen in the game. And, like, what happened in the game was knight bd2, pawn takes bishop, castle's kingside. Alright, so this is all, you know, well, good. Anyway, in this position, black now decided to defend in a way that's very active. 
playing knight takes d4, winning another pawn, and also trying to trade some pieces. Since one way to uh, deal with an opponent's attack is to trade away their attacking pieces, as it's very hard for your opponent to attack you if they don't have any pieces. White plays rook b1, black plays knight takes e2 with check, that's very important, otherwise the queen would be lost. Queen takes e2, black plays queen to a3, e not taking this pawn as, you know, white is less concerned about, you know, their pawns, white is more concerned about getting their pieces into the game and attacking, and black, you know, wants to make sure that they can defend. Black is already up two pawns and is doing quite well. So in this position, white played the move rook f c1. However, there is another move which the engine likes a lot better. Better, in fact, the engine considers the move rook f c1 to be inaccurate, even though it has been played a couple of times in practice. And what the engine suggests, which has never been played, is this idea with queen b5 check. And if black now blocks with bishop d7, white can just take on b7 winning back a pawn and improving the positioning of their queen. But I, I guess that um, Grandmasters might not like this for white, since uh, even though the engine prefers black to play rook d8, I personally feel that rook c8 is just a bit better, just a bit more fun, as it would uh, prevent white from making use of the c file. I, uh, so I think this is an interesting idea, though, just the queen b5 check. Queen takes b7, but this is not what happened in the game. Instead, back in this position, white played the move rook fc1. The engine considers this inaccurate, but I think it's very reasonable. Just bringing another piece into the attack. And this position, the best move for black is to just play queen a4 to prevent queen b5 check. Black did not prevent queen b5 check and played bishop to e7. And... White now played rook to c7, then getting their rook active, maybe trying to, you know, put some pressure on the bishop over here, try to prevent black from castling, maybe, stuff like that. Uh, black now plays pawn to a6, now preventing the queen from coming to b5. White plays rook b c1, and attacking the bishop on c8. Black plays bishop to d7. And it's important to note that the pawn on b7 is not actually ha hanging, because if white were to take it, then whoops, that's not good. <laughs> so instead, white defended their rook and also their pawn on a2 with the move knight to b3. Black now plays bishop to d8. And again, it's important to note that the pawn on b7 isn't really hanging, because if white were to take it, then whoops, this rook will be trapped. But thankfully, that's not what happened in the game. Instead, um, white played the move rook 7 c3. Threatening to perhaps, you know, do some nasty discoveries by moving this knight. Right, and attacking the queen. And black isn't fully sure what white is planning with their pieces. So black improves the positioning of their bishop and questions the queen. Basically asking white, what are you planning to do with this queen? What, where's this queen going? White plays queen e3, black plays queen e7, black's not too worried about this pawn, black's more worried about their king's safety. White takes the pawn, and now black plays a move bishop to c4, which I think is a very cool idea. Basically, the idea behind this move is black wants to just lock these rooks out of the queen side. Play pawn to b3, just have a very strong, nasty bishop here that's hard to get rid of. And then just hide the king, king in the center. Like, black doesn't always necessarily want to castle kingside in these lines. Sometimes the king is actually safer in the center, behind all these pawns. So white made a move that's very human. I mean, a move that I totally get why they made, even though the engine really doesn't like it. And that is rook takes c4. Sadly, this exchange sacrifice is just a bit unsound. But it does at least keep things open. Open. It makes it more possible for maybe black to go wrong. But um, in this position, if you want, you can pause the video and try to find a very, very cool idea by black. Uh, 
Like, currently, it looks like white might now play queen to g7 on their next move. So, black has a very, very cool way of dealing with that problem. Um, so, if you want, you can pause the video and try to find black's next move. It's a very cool idea. It's something that you might have forgotten about. Oh, it's, an, it's a very interesting little option. I will reveal the move in 3, 2, 1. The move that Black now played was Bishop to c7. And the idea is that Black is threatening the castle queenside. If Black can castle queenside and hide their king in the corner over here, then Black's king is very safe. Like, Black, White will have great difficulty actually attacking the king, even though it's opposite side castle. Like, White is kind of running out of pieces in order to actually launch a successful attack. And Black's pieces, they are, you know... They're very close, those to the queen side, so they'll do a good job of just defending. And so if white now played queen to g7, attacking this rook, black's like, ah, it's fine, I'll just castle queen side and threaten checkmate on d1. And, and my king will be safe, and your attack is silly, and I will just win this game because I am up an exchange. And also a pawn. Yes, also a pawn. But um, that's not what happened in the game. Instead, white prevented black from castling queenside by playing the move queen to d2. And black played rook to d8, activating this rook this way. White played queen to c2, putting some pressure on this bishop over here. Black now plays queen to d7, getting ready, like, basically not defending the bishop, but countering with a threat of their own, threatening checkmate on the back rank. White played knight bd4, blocking that threat for now. Black played bishop b6 as the bishop was under attack. This improves the position, position of the bishop as well. White makes some luft with the move pawn to h3. Black centralizes their queen with the move queen to d d5. The queen is doing many things on this square, potentially eyeing this pawn, but also potentially eyeing this, and also defending this pawn. Just a very good square for the queen. Like, very often the reason why controlling the center is so important is because the center is where your pieces are strongest. You want to be able to put your pieces in the center. That's why, you know, there's all this talk of controlling the center. Anyway, white plays queen to a4 with check. Black blocks to check. White plays rook to c8 with check. Black can't block with the rook because it is pinned. So black blocks with the bishop, as playing king to e7 would lose this rook, and also probably be a little bit unsafe, as it might be vulnerable to some checks. At least in the future. Maybe not right away. Anyway, bishop to d8. White plays queen to c2, trying to get ready to kick this queen away with the move rook to c5. And in this position, black played the second best move, which is pawn to b6. But there's actually a very cool idea with the move queen to a5. Because if white tries kicking this queen away with rook to c5, if you want, you can pause the video, like you probably see the move right now, and just uh, try to figure out what black would play in this position. I will reveal the move in 3, 2, 1. Black would just play the move rook to c7. And after rook takes queen, there will just be rook takes queen. And if knight takes rook, there will be bishop takes rook. And this is just a completely winning endgame for black. But that's not what happened in the game. Instead, black back in this position, black prevented rook to c5 with the move pawn to b6. And in this position, white made a move that was a bit inaccurate with queen to d2. Ooh. And the reason why this move is inaccurate is because it actually allows black to kick this rook to a passive square by playing rook to c7. Like, remember that white doesn't really want to trade rooks, as that will simplify the position. And basically, the black is up material, so trading pieces is generally good for black, whereas trading pawns is generally good for white. So this would force this rook to b8, where it would no longer be on the c-file, and it would be less active. It would just uh, worsen the positioning of this rook, and black might be eventually able to force a trade of this rook, maybe by, you know, getting the king up, or maybe castling, you know, stuff like that. 
But um, back in this position, Black missed an opportunity to do that. Black instead kicked the rook away with the move queen to b7. White played rook to c3. Black plays queen to e4, which I think is somewhat premature, but um, it is a good square for the queen, just not immediately, not right away. White uh, kicks the queen away with rook to e3. Queen goes back to d5, which in this particular position I think is a better square, although queen e4 will become a better square very soon. White plays rook c3, as white would be very happy to rip repeat moves as white's attack doesn't seem to be going anywhere white is just down material white would probably be very happy to take a draw here black plays rook to g8 the engine doesn't like this move but i think it's reasonable like just activating the rook and maybe getting ready to do some tactics involving this pin maybe trying to you know win one of these knights knights or at least tie the knights down to like tie this knight down to having to defend against this mate threat and stuff like that. That the engine really wants whites to play queen e2 and just uh, keep the queen centralized and flexible. But white instead plays queen to f4, which you know is an okay move. Move it's not really that bad. And what's funny is that in this position, black now plays the move queen takes a2. And the engine considers this a mistake. It's like, oh, this move is only minus one when it could be minus two. But basically, I just played this move and then turned on the engine and then the engine just changed its mind. It's like, actually, no, this this move is good. And, and I think this move makes a lot of sense because Black basically just wants to use these connected fast pawns to win the game. And I think the reason why the engine might have misevaluated the position is this is much more of a long-term plan and it's not something that's going to win like one move from now two moves from now five moves from now but it might m win like 10 or 20 moves from now uh, so i think queen takes a2 makes a lot of sense and is a very good plan for winning the game white plays rook c8 eight trying to you know tie black's pieces down trying to do something in trying to be active White plays queen b1 check. Sorry, black plays queen b1 check. The engine doesn't like this move. I don't fully understand the reason why. I, I think it's reasonable. I think the queen's fairly well placed here. It's defending this weakness. This and also helps support the march of these pawns up the board. The queen kind of wants to get out of the way of the pawns. The queen was kind of a bit awkwardly placed on a2. White plays king to h2. Now black plays rook to c7. And I think white got a bit scared here as black's part of black's idea might have been to play rook c1 and then rook h1 check. Although it turns out that this idea doesn't really work. work. Like it doesn't fully work, but it's actually very hard to calculate this far ahead. For example, if white plays rook b8, black can play rook c1. And, and then, oh, was it? Was it rook b8? Yeah, yeah, rook b8. Rook c1, and then if white tries going for or pawn, pawn to g4, like white should go for pawn to g4 because checkmate on h1 was threatened. If black tries, tries this check, king can hide here. White can attack the pawn on h3. Only move for white is queen h6. And uh, white would just be barely holding on here, but... Uh, it's white is actually okay. It's actually difficult to see how black would proceed with this attack, but it's also very difficult to calculate this far ahead and see that, you know, white will be okay. What white actually did in the game is very human. Like back in this position, when black played rook to c7, white instead traded rooks, and the engine really doesn't like this because it simplifies. Uh, as the engine instead wanted white to you know, just accept that crazy attack on their king because the in the engine's opinion, things will work out for white. All right, so after trading, white's played knight to c6, trying to go for some checkmate ideas on the e7 square, but sadly, this is too slow and it doesn't work. White, black plays queen to c2, attacking the knight. White plays knight f d4, defending the knight, attacking the queen. Black plays queen to c5, defending uh, this square, but also attacking this pawn. 
White plays pawn to g3 because the king is kind of lined up with the uh, bishop this way. So, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable. It makes sense to improve the king's safety this way. Black starts pushing their past pawns. White plays queen to f6. And sadly, this move doesn't really work because black just responds with rook to g6. And if white now tried to win the h7 pawn with queen to h8 check, black can play queen to f8. And after taking this, black could actually force a queen trade with the move queen to h6. So that's why this move was seen as inaccurate by the engine. It's because black has this nice resource with rook g6. White plays queen to h4. Black plays pawn to h6, defending their pawn, and also just um, taking a bit of space, kind of restricting white a bit over here. White plays queen to e4. Black keeps pushing their pawns, as this is kind of black's win condition. This is how black will win the game. White plays queen e2. Ooh, and black, um, uh, let's see. Black just keeps pushing, just keeps pushing their pawn. And uh, let's see. White does not want to trade queens, as that would still be losing. Losing, although it's important to just look at that real quick. So, if, so for example, if queen takes, then black is just very happy to take. And after take, then black will just play king d7 and just use their king to support the remaining pawn. And according to the engine, it's just mi minus eight. Like this would just be hopeless. Like, black is up material, black is going to probably eventually win one of these knights with this pawn. Pawn, black's king is much closer to the pawn than white's king. And black might not even necessarily need to use this rook. Although, black probably should. It's a lot easier to, so. Anyway, that's not what happened in the game. Instead, back in this position, instead of winning this pawn, white play pawn to h4. Black play pawn to h3. White play pawn to h5. Black plays rook to g5, trying to tie the queen down to defending this pawn. White plays pawn to f4, but this does kind of weaken white's king just a little bit. It, and also blocks this diagonal. So, as Fisher would say, you have to give squares to get squares. Anyway, black plays rook g7, keeping the rook just here to just do some defensive duties. Please also... Maintaining some pressure on the g3 pawn, which has now been weakened. White plays queen d2. Ooh, white doesn't have a whole lot to do. Black plays bishop to b6, as the bishop was poorly placed on this diagonal. It's just staring at three pawns. Whereas on b6, it's going to be used to help tie up white's pieces. Currently, this knight is tied up because it's defending this knight. And this knight is tied up because it's defending this knight. And very soon, this queen will be tied up as well. So white plays king to h3. Black plays queen to c4. Now tying up the queen, as if the queen moves away from defending this knight, then black will be able to take with the bishop. And also, black's queen is supporting the pawn on a2, come, like the a-pawn going forward. So white plays king to h2. White has nothing better to do than just shuffle their king back and forth. Black plays pawn to a2, and it was in this position that white now resigned. And it's not very hard to see why. Like, it's very hard for white to stop... Well, it's impossible for white to stop promotion without losing material. Like, if knight c2, then just queen takes this knight. And if white tries a move like queen b2, then that would give up the d3 square. So black might be able to just play queen d3 and go after this pawn, threaten checkmate, all that kind of nasty stuff. So it makes a lot of sense that um, white re would resign here. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the game. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thank you, and bye for now.